All right, Ian here with the Trails Collective, kicking off the first edition, edition of the weekly rundown. Uh, it's March 4th, uh, 2020. For those uh, who maybe don't know myself and Elliot, my name is Ian Golden. Uh, starting the Trails Collective uh, as a background, I've uh, been an athlete and runner uh, most of my life. Uh, ran through college, focused on trail and ultra afterward, and really took some intentional um, detours to make uh, running um, a profession, I suppose, to a certain extent. I've uh, founded and operated uh, two or three running stores, running specialty stores over the years uh, in upstate New York. Uh, I've started a uh, race and event business called Red Newt Racing and have put on, uh, I think, uh, 10 different races over the past uh, 10 years um, and continue to be a, a runner uh, myself. Uh, three young daughters live here in Ithaca, New York. Um, and pretty stoked to be uh, kicking off the Trails Collective here. I'm Ellie. I also live locally in Ithaca, New York. I manage College Town Bagels, uh, one of the one of the branches of College Town Bagels, uh, which is a local specialty sandwich and bagel shop. I run for Ian's company, Red Newt Racing, and along with CTB and Red Newt Racing and the Finger Lakes Running Store, I've gotten a lot of support to keep running. Uh, I did not run in high school or college, nor did I think that this would be a profession of mine. Um, so I started on the roads, moved to the trails, and now I sort of do a combination of both, but I love it all and I've had a lot of success. Sweet. And so the concept here, what we're launching into, uh, this is going to be the weekly rundown portion of the Trails Collective. And really what I wanted to offer was something that wasn't just uh, entertainment. I wanted it to be uh, functional uh, news, uh, so to speak. Uh, and I'm, with the Trails Collective, I'm trying to solve various uh, maybe pieces of the puzzle uh, related to trail running uh, that I've had issues with over the years, whether it be finding a complete trail calendar, uh, whether it be connecting with people uh, outside of uh, Facebook, for instance. And another one is really just getting the news on what's happening at the local or regional level. Uh, some of the pieces that are out there right now maybe do uh, national, international uh, news or headlines. And uh, some of it's pretty entertaining, uh, but it doesn't really apply to a lot of the local races and finding out what's happening on the ground. Uh, what I also wanted to do was be able to showcase uh, some of the events that were outside of my own immediate bubble. Uh, I think it's easy to think that just the things around you is uh, some of the best that's out there. Uh, and while we have some really beautiful events uh, in our backyard, it's really cool to find out events that I had uh, no knowledge of prior. And so I'm really excited through the weekly rundowns to start diving into to some of that. Uh, so we'll try to bring you up to speed with uh, maybe once what events have happened this past week, uh, what's coming uh, this coming weekend, and hopefully it'll really, um, I guess, pre prove useful. Uh, and for it to really flourish, I'm going to need all of you really pitching in, giving me or giving us uh, the heads up on uh, maybe an event that's opening this coming weekend, uh, if there's a uh, or event registration that's opening. I think a lot of us have uh, found our way to events that maybe we think look really great, but we find out, ah, they actually registration opened last week and it uh, sold out or capped in three days. So we'll try to give you the heads up when uh, events are opening uh, and really just uh, try to pull uh, all these pieces together. Uh, so uh, diving into, I guess, what's happening or shaking uh, out this week. Uh, at least on uh, this end, I've been trying to do what I can to get the Trails Collective uh, ready for uh, going live here in the next couple weeks. Uh, running a bit where I can, um, but really uh, probably more exciting comes from uh, Ellie. What, tell us about what, uh, what you're up to this past weekend. So last night I returned home from Atlanta, Georgia. I was fortunate to race my way into the Olympic marathon trials. Um, it was an amazing experience, and although uh, run, running in the winter is sometimes a little bit uh, not as fun as running the beautiful trails in the summer, uh, I had a wonderful experience, and I met a lot of uh, ultra runners down there that also did really, really well. All of the ultra runners that started and finished the race, we all finished in under three hours, which the standard for um, the marathon trials to get to the race is uh, 245. Uh, personally, uh, I ran actually a 244.59 at the trials race, but uh, 
uh, Bethany Sh Schachtelben of Virginia actually ran a 236, which her PR is 231. So that's smoking fast, especially for uh, for anyone. And considering ultra runners, we sort of spend our time going up and down. So uh, to keep that leg speed is pretty in pretty incredible. Also, uh, Ian tells me local elite uh, Casey Edmond of Huntington, Vermont, finished in a 252, which uh, looking at her ultra sign-up results, she's got the uh, Broken Arrow Sky Race Vertical K, where she finished third in the Vertical K and the 25K. And uh, it turns out I have raced her before. She finished about a half an hour in front of me at the North Face Endurance Challenge in 2016. Uh, uh, Red Newt Racing also provides support to my two teammates, Chelsea Benson and Bailey Drews, who also went down with me to race in the trials. Bailey Drews finished in a 242 and change, and Chelsea finished in a 247 and change. So not a bad showing for Ithaca runners. Yeah, not so bad at all. And as part of the Trails Collective, I'm going to really try to keep it focused on trail, but if there are things that come up like this, it's pretty incredible uh, that Ellie uh, and a number of women, I think, record, how many women? ran or qualified or is 500 some 511 uh, and 11 women qualified and i think about 490 started the race so pretty incredible i think more than twice the amount of men that were down there something yes. to that effect yep yeah so pretty uh incredible uh so yeah we're gonna keep it pretty uh focused on trail but where there's some pretty exceptional things that happen we'll still try to call it out um on that note um finishing off uh, the trials and bringing it back to trail a little bit you had a great opportunity to Oh, I was able to speak with Eric from Ultra Runner Podcast. So I talked a, a lot about my experiences at the trials. And uh, that episode should be coming out this week. And then also, if you're more of a reader, I did just post a recap of my race experience on my website, elliepell.com. Sweet. And then also another, even though it's not trail, we'll still try to call out some uh, exceptional events that uh, happen maybe in our region. Uh, and one of them this past weekend was uh, Comset. It's been, I don't know how many years now, or maybe Ellie, you know, but um, the 50K uh, US Road uh, Championship. So I know that doesn't necessarily appeal to everybody. It sounds pretty brutal. Um, but Ellie, you dug in a little bit to those results. Yeah, uh, of note, Laura Klein of Syracuse, New York, finished third. Uh, she spends most of her time in the mountains, so having that leg speed on the course, which the course is uh, 10 loops of a 5K course. So um, she, doing pretty well for a winner in Syracuse. Just four minutes behind her was Lauren Dosky of New York City. And uh, so pretty good showing for the Northeast Ultra Runners. On the men's side, uh, Cole Crosby, who actually used to be an Ithaca local, he uh, finished fifth. Maybe if he wore his toga like he did in his world record, he might have finished a little bit faster. Um, right behind Cole were a pair of New Yorkers, uh, Ronald Joseph and Aaron Heath. And then a uh, friend of both Ian and I and of New Pulse, Jason Friedman, came up strong with uh, just Sub, uh, sub four hour finish and 15th place. Sweet. And uh, Jay Friedman, for those who don't know, uh, is a coach as well as a physician, exercise physiologist um, based in New Paltz. He has a, also a podcast uh, called The Pain Cave. Some of the others out there, Running Inside Out podcast coming out of Rochester. Both of those I think are quiet this week. I did uh, was able to tune into the Connecticut Ultra Trail or the Cultura podcast uh, last night. Uh, they're pretty regular, pretty entertaining crew uh, if you haven't caught up. Uh, I felt like there was probably more cursing on there than a 1980s uh, Richard Pryor movie, and it made me want to um, apply the uh, earmuffs. Max, can you earmuff it for me? We are going to get so much ass here, it's going to be sick. I'm talking like crazy, like boy band ass. Uh, but entertaining uh, crew. The focus of last or this week's episode was tribalism, uh, and it was pretty interesting. I think we all have our tribes, so to speak, and they dig into a little bit uh, of how that goes. Uh, other news of note, I guess, getting outside of the podcast world, uh, Mount Tammany 10 uh, is a pretty burly event coming up in the Water Gap in a couple weeks that a bunch of us are signed up for. Uh, there were some fires uh, in the Water Gap right on the course. I checked in with the park uh, manager contacts uh, this past week, haven't uh, heard back on an update. 
uh, but pretty unfortunate and still just waiting to hear on the status of the trails in that area. It's been pretty impressively uh, dry around. I guess in our bubble, we've still got some snow up here in Ithaca, so it's been really kind of wild to uh, go outside and just hear that other people really just don't have much winters going on. So uh, maybe some pretty dry conditions down there as well, but uh, pretty unfortunate. And we'll uh, get back to you next week on maybe an update with that. Uh, so that's uh, some of what's gone on uh, in terms of the news. Oh, and also the Ultra Runner, um, the Cultra podcast. And I'll try the other thing in addition to tribalism, they mentioned that the uh, Connecticut Forest Park Association also maybe updated uh, their uh, very interactive map on their website. And I think I've checked out something similar before, uh, but this one allows you to really dig in with different overlays and uh, really go deep with uh, some of the trails that are in Connecticut. So if you haven't checked that out, go to uh, ctwoodlands.org uh, and you can find their uh, trail map and information and check that out. I really like that. Trails Rock also has something similar. They also have an app with all the trails on it, which is really convenient when you have service. Well, yeah. Um, so let us know on those things. So if we're missing things in the rundowns or if you also have like some pretty uh, cool maps, apps, whatever, let us know and we can mention them in, in your community and maybe uh, see if we can mirror them in our, ours as well. Uh, the moving on to uh, events. Uh, race directors going forward, for sure send us a, a message if you've got some interesting stories that you want us to share or uh, specific results. We won't be able to dig into all of them, but at least maybe we can mention it or put it in the notes. Uh, so this past weekend, the Virginia, Virginia Happy Trails uh, put on the uh, Hoshua Hills 50K in Westminster, Maryland. Uh, one of the things that I, and this is also getting outside of my own bubble of learning about other events, uh, learning some just really kind of fun things. Uh, so uh, the event registration fee for this event has gone down 10 cents every year since its uh, inception in 2010 and 2011, and it's dropping down to $18.95 for 2021. My cups cost more than 15 cents. All right, fuck the cups. Pour them in my hand for a dime. Anyone. That's pretty exceptional for a 50K, and I think speaks to, I think, how deep and how long-standing the Virginia Happy Trails crew goes and really uh, how much it's rooted in uh, that classic uh, all-community ultra. So uh, Naked Bavarian ran in Blue Marsh Lake. Uh, Ellie and I have both raced that one before. Uh, really fun, flowy course. A really good community, uh, the Uber Endurance Sports. He puts on fun, low-key events. Uh, definitely one to check out. Their registration numbers really uptick this year, so I think the popular popularity is still growing. Uh, Explore Your Limits happened in Roanoke, Virginia. There was the Merck Forest uh, Snowshoe Ultra. Uh, looking at some of the pictures, it looks like they've still got some uh, snow up there in the uh, Taconics. Um, something unique, I guess, to that one, they build themselves at the toughest sanctioned snowshoe race in the world with 8,500 feet of climbing and some pretty steep ascents in there. Uh, tough timing, I think the uh, U.S. Nationals ran this past weekend and Worlds, uh, I think, close maybe the past couple weeks as well, I guess, cramming it all in. Uh, but if you're a snowshoer and a mountain one at that, that's definitely one to check out. That's the Merck Forest event. Um, and so I think that's pretty much what ran. Um, so we can get into uh, what's coming ahead uh, this weekend. We'll run through some of them and then maybe Ellie will comment on a couple that uh, stuck out to us a bit. Uh, there's a Spring Forward 5K trail run in Williamsport, uh, PA. Uh, benefits the United Way. Uh, there's the Looney Leprechaun Trail 10K and 20K in Tyler uh, State Park in Richboro, PA. Uh, there's the No Man's Triangle or the No Man's 50K, rather, in Triangle, Virginia, which is also happening. And um, this is one where it's an all-women's event. Uh, men, of course, uh, able to be there in the volunteer uh, capacity, which they could uh, use in terms of the assistance. Uh, but it's one uh, in probably a growing number out there, which is an all-women's race. And Ellie and I uh, touched base on whether that be something we could explore uh, a little bit deeper, maybe going forward. But I just thought it was kind of fun on Ellie's uh, initial reaction to the concept of an all-women's event. What do you think of an all women's event? Well, uh, there aren't too many around here, so I haven't exactly ever thought of signing up for one. However, I am headed out to Lake Sonoma in a month or so, and there is a women's half marathon that's the day before the Lake Sonoma course. So I'm so the Lake Sonoma 50 miler. So I'll be really interested to see how that goes. I think part of the what actually drew me to trail running, especially in this past year, is I do like competing with men because I like to beat them sometimes. It, it feels really good. So I'm not initially attracted to a women's only um, 
a women's only ultra or trail race, but they do, they are starting to intrigue me. And especially, I really appreciate it that at least at Lake Sonoma, there's childcare available for the women, which is stellar. So uh, I'll be interested to see how that goes. And I mean, I, I, I've never met a race I didn't really like. So I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely look into it more in, uh, at Lake Sonoma. Cool. And that's the No Man's uh, 50K. Uh, registration is closed, uh, but check it out for 2021 if you are interested. Uh, for any uh, women or men, uh, for sure, it'd be great to have a dialogue on this topic, and especially if we dig in more in the future. So if you have any feelings on, uh, I guess, that topic one way or the other, like to see more, don't quite get it, whatever it is, uh, for sure weigh in on maybe the YouTube thread, and maybe we can carry it over onto uh, various discourse or Facebook threads as well on the other platforms. Uh, there's a March Maniac 11-hour endurance run happening in Williamsburg, Virginia. Uh, registration closes uh, this Friday. It's still open until March 6th. Uh, there's a run to the Tap Room in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Uh, that's a 5K running and ending at the Calvert Brewing Company. Uh, and I'll post it's currently on the uh, Tap lineup there at the uh, Brewing Company in case you want to know whether uh, it's worth uh, going out or not. Uh, let's see. There's the King of the Mountain in Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, this is one I don't quite get what's all uh, happening, uh, but it's run at the Liberty Mountain Snowplex Center. Just looking online, it looks like a pretty cool facility. Uh, it seems to be a two-mile challenge, starting with a quad busting, as they uh, term it, downhill mile, uh, followed by spinning around to head straight up Liberty Mountain. Uh, I think it's uh, 500 down, 500 back up, or elevation uh, change of 1,000 feet. So that sounds kind of cool, and that just that complex looks uh, pretty cool. Uh, Seneca Greenway Trail Marathon at 50K in Gaithersburg, uh, Maryland. Uh, you can register up until the start of the race at 8 a.m. And there's, there's the Ski Shoe and uh, Fat Bike to the Clouds in Gorham, New Hampshire. Also sounds like a really cool event. Uh, they bill themselves as North America's toughest 10K. That's a pretty bold claim. Uh, I think their gain is 2,400 feet. The first 4K, rather, is over the Great Glen Trails. And then it merges for the last 6K going up the Mount Washington Auto Road. A pretty burly climb, as most people know, and particularly in the winter, that's got to be pretty nuts. Uh, but I think the uh, gain is 2,400 feet. Uh, one of the races I we put on at uh, Whiteface uh, in our ver vertical K, or even in the uh, the mountain race, uh, we gain a little over 3,000 feet in uh, two and a half miles. So I'm going to ch challenge that uh, that bold claim there, and we'll we'll have it out on the comments section. See which one's uh, tougher. Um, so we'll get into the last two. Uh, one of them is a trail methods last runner standing in Greece, New York, and uh, Ellie dug into that one a little bit. Uh, sure. So trail methods is run by uh, Eric and Sheila Egan, uh, was some of the nicest and uh, best people that uh, run run races around here. And so basically, uh, last runner standing events have become popular with like Laz's big big yak backyard ultra kind of just seeing how far the human body can go this one's a little bit different in that there are 26 total loops and each loop is about a mile long and uh, you get a set amount of time for each loop so the first loop you get 20 minutes to complete the loop so say you complete the loop in eight minutes then you get the rest of the time to relax chill and it's a mass start with every loop however the, the twist is with each loop you get less time to complete the loop and so on the 26th loop you only get seven minutes no one has actually completed the 20 26 loops so far but this year we have a local local hero davin uh, how do you say his last name oskvig uh, I think so. Close and, enough. Well, and so uh, I have money on him to complete all 26 loops. Uh, one that caught, and this is one that caught my eye or attention uh, that's happening is the Humdinger Trail Races in Danville, PA. This is one that I'm fairly certain just never would have been on my radar had I not really started digging in for this project. And the event just looks like a lot of fun. Uh, it's basically there's four eight-mile options. Uh, costumes are welcomed or encouraged. I'm not necessarily a costume uh, person myself, uh, but I think it's pretty cool when other people are dressed up. Uh, Post-race hot food and beer, there's tech shirts. There's no race day registration, so you can check it out and see whether you can get on it. Uh, but the, the photos of the event just look like a lot of fun. I checked in with a buddy, Matt Lipsy, uh, who came up in one of the photos, and it's, he's done most races. Uh, and his response was, it's a hoot. Uh, so if, if Matt finds his way there and says it's a hoot, it's probably worth checking out. Um, one of the pictures I'll post is this awesome dude in some, I don't know, pirate outfit 
climbing up some rope with a sword at his side, and I'm just like, what? What does he need the sword for? I'm I don't know what he needs the sword for. Now I want to go. Yeah, I'm not sure. It does make you, it does ask, what's that sword for? There was another one where a, um, a woman is climbing up, so I guess they've got a, um, I forget what the obstacle is called, but you're basically climbing up into a pig barn, and they've got uh, a climbing uh, hold wall as well as a, a cargo net, and you're basically climbing up the wall of this pig barn and in through the window as far as I can tell, or maybe you're not going in the window. I don't know, but it really looks intriguing, uh, and I think it's definitely one that I'm going to maybe try to do next year. Uh, they opened it up to 250 entrants. I'm not sure whether that caps out. Uh, for this year, registration closed uh, yesterday, and there's no race day registration. So if you're not signed up, you're kind of out of luck. Uh, but for sure, mark it on your calendars, as I will for 2021, and we'll try to remember to give you the heads up when uh, registration opens. Uh, so for the Trails Collective, and what we're covering in the opening region is pretty much the Northeast plus the Virginias. And so they're the, the states that we're focused on. They're the events that I could find. Uh, if you've got an event going, feel free to post it in the comments section, and we'll put it on our radars for next year. Uh, but that's pretty much the weekly rundown at the moment. Um, Ellie, want to add anything into this mix? Um, we're doing our best. And uh, again, please, if you have any results, something, if you were at the race and had an incredible experience or something crazy happened, please let us know. We'd love to share it, send photos, anything. We uh, follow us at the Trails Collective on Instagram. You can follow me at Gazelli and I will uh, do my best to, you know, show everybody the reason I love the Northeast. Right on. Sounds good. Uh, so thanks for tuning in to our first uh, weekly rundown. Uh, we'll try to respond to your comments, feedback. If both of us are up here talking way too fast, if we're covering too much, if we're covering too little, uh, let us know whatever it is. Um, and we're really excited to uh, build this together. Uh, so thanks so much for, for tuning in, and we will hopefully talk to you next week.